You know, it's just a, it's just another week in the NFL, right? Um, no, it's a, it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity. I think it starts there. Um, I'm thankful to be here, a part of this team, and um, just the way the guys have welcomed me in um, and allowed me to just come in and be myself. I'm excited to leave this weekend. I know it's a big game, obviously. I haven't been here the entire year, but um, anytime you have a chance to go to the playoffs, it's a tremendous opportunity. I'm excited for it. Does it validate your six-year journey? Um, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't, I, mean, I wouldn't say I'm seeking any validation, you know. Um, everyone's journey to wherever they are, your journey, my journey, you have your dreams, goals, and aspirations. I have my dreams, goals. They might be different, but our journeys, you know, they're, they're going to look different. And that's a part of everyone's story, right? So um, you just have to live in your world, you know, maximize your journey, the opportunities that come. Um, take advantage of them, and I'm excited for this one this weekend. How do you gain traction as a leader at the, leader, the leadership position in such short order? Just be yourself. You know, I, um, most of these guys have been in the NFL for, for a while, so they, they know um, authentic, authenticity when they see it. So um, you just be yourself, right? Um, how you prepare, how you approach each day, each meeting, each walkthrough, each practice, and then, you know, when the ball's in hand, you have to go out and deliver. That's what everyone's looking for. That's what I'm looking for out of myself. That's what the coaches are looking for out of each player in here. So, um, yeah, you just do that, trusting your preparation, and just go play ball and let everything else fall where it may. How has that process been for you just as far as going from a guy that didn't know half of their names to actually being a leader in this locker room? It's been good. It's been fun. You know, I've embraced it. Um, I, just take, I just take life one day at a time. So I think if you do that, you maximize each event in front of you, right? So maximize the walkthrough, then maximize the team meeting, then maximize the QB meeting, and just go from there. Um, then that's when you see the best results. So I just take things one day at a time, and um, I've embraced, embraced the role. I'm excited about it. What's the challenge, though, preparing for something that you've never been a part of or experienced before? Well, I've been on playoff team, so I wouldn't say. As a leader, though. I mean, different. you're always a leader at the quarterback position, so I wouldn't say it's any different, right? Um, whether you're the starting quarterback or you're the two, there's just so much pressure, right? Because when you're the backup, now it's like, hey, you have to really emulate the offense that we're seeing perfectly because we need to see as many good reps as we can before the game comes. So at the quarterback position, the pressure's already there, always there. It's always on your shoulder. You're always a leader. You're always viewed um, in the leadership role. So for me, I just be myself, take it one day at a time. What did Mike tell you and maybe what has kind of gone through your mind in the in – the, in the 24, 40 hours since, as far as excitement level for Saturday? Yeah, um, you know, the the game and obviously the uh, magnitude of the game, right, everything around it, it's what you dream of playing in NFL football. You want to play meaningful football, especially in December and January, right? You want to play in those playoff games. Um, so you want to be a part of that. So um, I've watched and been a part of teams that have been a part of that, um, so to play in it. Um, there's a lot of excitement around it, but also there's also recognition in the preparation, right? The lead up to it, the uh, maximizing today being Tuesday, a Wednesday practice, practice maximizing those reps and uh, my encounters with my teammates and getting helping them get prepared, help them see what I'm seeing from the quarterback position, so that when Saturday comes, you know, we just go play football and all the emotions out of it is taken away. We're able to just lock in on each play and just go play ball. Joe, what's, what's your study time been like? What's your study time been like since last Thursday's game? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. What's your study time been like since last Thursday's game? Um, yeah, so we obviously we had a, a longer weekend. Um, I was in Friday reviewing the tape from Dallas, and especially situationally as we talked about after the game, figure out how, how I can improve uh, when the ball's in my hand, especially in those big situations, right? Um, so studying that with the coaches, um, coming in, rest, recovery, and then from there it's been watching film of Jacksonville, getting a feel from them, whether it was the Titans last game, uh, which I obviously wasn't here for, or you know the other games that they played, um, just getting a feel for their defense, their personnel. So I will say it's um, you know pretty routine um, from that standpoint, just because you know I pride myself in my preparation. So at this point, there's no. No point in changing that preparation. You know? This How is much a very better? unique situation that, that you're kind of jumping into. Is there anybody you reached out to just for some motivational words or advice um, in any way? No, I wouldn't say that. I just re rely on my support group. We have a great support group with my family and the people that I have around me. So just rely on them and staying narrowly focused, right? There's all, obviously, when we play quarterback in the NFL um, and you're uh, in a huge game, right? There's a lot of noise around it. But, you know, you just got to stay focused on the task at hand, right? Um, control what you can control and take it one day at a time. How much better can you be week one to week two, you think? I think I, think I can definitely be better, as we talked about, situationally. I think, I, I think there'll be a, a large jump. Obviously, when, you're, when you haven't been in there getting the reps week in and week out, you know, um, it takes a second to, to get back accustomed to that. Um, and we saw that on Thursday. So 
Um, situationally, being able to take care of the football, put our team in good situations, continue to move the chains as we were able to do several times on Thursday night. I think that's where the game is going to, that's what the game's going to come down to. Um, and me personally, that's what I'm focused on. I'm excited for that opportunity. You know, I think this is bigger than football. Um, this is about a young man fighting for his life. So uh, definitely my thoughts and prayers are with uh, him and his family. And we, you know, obviously we addressed it as a team and, you know, guys kind of, you know, spoke how they thought about it and everything. It's just it's just a crazy situation. Something I've never seen uh, playing football, especially not in the NFL. It's just crazy. Coach Rabel said he was in awe of how the, the Bengals and Bills really kind of supported each other through that time. Yeah, because like I said, this is bigger than football. Like nobody, like they would have had to cancel the game because I don't think anybody seeing that and watching somebody getting performed CPR on the field and then having to play football again. You know, people were very emotional because like you said, if that was, that could have been somebody in our locker room. That could have been one of our brothers in the locker room. And I know that I would have felt, you know, similar as far as being emotional. So like I said, it's just, just a, a serious time right now. It's just a, for me, especially last night, was a, a deep moment of reflection, you know, about, you know, you just never know uh, what can happen on uh, when it may be your time or anything like that. So I just text some people that I loved and just told them I love them and things like how that. It a, how is it a reminder, KB, of just how violent the game is and the choices that you guys make to put yourself in harm's way going out there? It's a big reminder. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody that plays this game goes into a game thinking life or death, literally. Um, but we definitely understand the seriousness of the injuries that can happen, especially usually thinking more long term. But I mean, to see something like that just gives you a reminder, like, you know, I've been blessed to be able to play this game for as long as I have and to be as healthy as I've been. And I don't take that for granted. Um, that's why I do so much recovery and do so much different things just because of uh, just the dangers of this game. But nobody can prepare for anything that happened last night. It's been 2019 since you guys played a road playoff game. This isn't necessarily mm -hmm. defined as a playoff game, but th that's kind of going to kind of be the atmosphere, isn't it? For sure. It should be electric environment. Um, it's a winner go home game for both teams. So uh, both teams are going to play extremely hard. It's going to be played like a playoff game. So uh, you, 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 you want to play games like this. I mean, it's going to be Saturday night prime time. Uh, it's going to be exciting atmosphere. So uh, we're, gonna, we're getting geared up and ready to go. Looks See, like you guys can be getting some guys back, some bodies back back there. Just how big is that for this type of a game? Yeah, it's going to be huge. You know, some guys that rested last week, they're, you know, a little bit healthier this week. I'm not sure, you know, what's going to happen with the roster situation and who's going to be up, who's not going to be up. But um, I just think just for myself, I'm just super excited about this opportunity that we have. And uh, and I feel like you can just feel it around the locker room. Guys are excited too, um, especially for some of these young guys. You know, this is a, a prime time game. It's a playoff game. So get your first taste of it this week. And, you know, if you win, you keep on playing. Duval might be a little different, right? With yeah. What's on the line, it's been not, not the biggest home environment for them. Lately. Absolutely. I expect the entire, you know, city of Jacksonville to be at the stadium. Um, like you said, the last few times we've been in Jacksonville, I mean, the games are usually always fun, but like you said, I think we're going to walk into a different stadium uh, than we're used to for sure. Kevin, you feel like you owe him one after the way this first game went down? I mean, you, kind of, you guys kind of beat yourselves a little bit and Trevor kind of had his head his way. Yeah, I mean, he's been playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Um, obviously, been in a division game. You don't, want, you don't want to lose any division games, but you definitely don't want to get swept by a team in the division. So. Uh, this is a huge game for us, not only just to get in the playoffs, but just, you know, as our division opponent, like you want to beat your division opponent. So, uh, like I said, we're extremely excited. We, you know, watching the film again uh, this week, seeing the mistakes that we made. Uh, we did kind of beat ourselves in a lot of moments. So uh, we have those opportunities this coming time. Uh, we got to make them. Um, uh, actually, other good friends from college that I played football with that also played with D. Ham. We're just at home in the living room. Uh, Watching the football game, um, we, we missed what exactly happened, but net, like five seconds later, seeing the first replay of it, and just kind of, just everybody else, just kind of sit there and hold your breath, figure out what's happening. You played with Demar Pitt. Just how much did you know him? I, I mean, what was this like? Just since you guys played together for so long, Pitt. Yeah, I mean, we didn't just play together. We friends, teammates. Uh, I mean, I've known them now for seven years. We both signed to Pitt 2016, same year. Both left for the draft uh, 2020 or whenever it was, same year. And that's a guy I talk to, um, whether it be on social media, text, Snapchat, Twitter, anything, at least probably once a week, constantly just sit telling each other how we see each other 
doing our thing each week, playing, and, you know, he has his own little clothing brand called Chasing M's. That's about, you know, chasing your dreams and chasing millions. You know, that's everybody's goal in a lot of things in life is reaching your dreams and getting millions and take care of your family. I have my own dream, dream G2R, our own brand, and we just always uh, interact and tell each other to keep going.